You gotta put your behind in your past, but we still can't let go of these theories. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dark theories about The Lion King. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at hot takes and theories no matter how far-fetched, but that do start to make a lot of sense the more you think about them. Whether they're events within the narrative, character backstories, or just hints of a Disney extended universe, the possibilities are endless. Number 10. The Lion King is part of the DEU We all know about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or MCU, but have you heard of the Disney Extended Universe? There have been plenty of theories over the years about this concept, but one Reddit user named T-Rex is Best suggested a world in which our favorite Disney lions are all interconnected. And so, we are all connected in the great circle of life. They pitch the idea that King Richard from Robin Hood is actually a descendant of Simba, who was the one to initialize the peace treaty between predators and prey. You know her, she knows you, but she wants to eat him, and everybody's okay with this? Did I miss something? <gasps> Relax, Timon. After that, Mayor Lionheart takes up the mantle in Zootopia. And Nick Wilde? Well, of course Robin Hood and Maid Marian are his ancestors. Hmm, kind of makes sense, right? I think we got it. We got it up there, thank you, Yakety Yak. You laid it all out beautifully. What? Number 9. The Lion King exists in an apocalyptic future. Here's a theory from another Redditor called The Names Early. It's easy to not consider the fact that animals are able to talk in the majority of Disney movies. But once you stop to think about it, you've got to wonder how they gain the power of speech. It's a tradition going back generations. Well, when I'm king, that'll be the first thing to go. Does The Lion King take place in a future not unlike the one we've seen in the Planet of the Apes movies? Not to mention the fact that we don't see any humans in the film. So we've got to wonder if they exist at all. When I'm king, what'll that make you? A monkey's uncle. <laughs> You're so weird. You have no idea. In this world, some animals can talk and others can't. So it isn't like in Zootopia where there's a certain equality there. What if the lions of Pride Rock and some of the other animals of the kingdom were given something to teach them to speak? Number 8. Scar was a cannibal Nobody knows my sorrow. Oh, Zazu, do lighten up. Sing something with a little bounce in it. We all know that Scar is the main villain of this story. He committed some serious atrocities throughout the plot, not least of which was killing his own brother, which kicked off the action. So we really wouldn't put anything past him. No one ever means for these things to happen. But the king is dead. And if it weren't for you, he'd still be alive. There's one scene in the original Lion King movie that had some fans questioning whether Scar actually ate another lion. No, no, anything but that. He's holding up a skull in a scene that recalls Shakespeare's Hamlet, but the thing is, the skull looks remarkably like his own. Once I'm as big as your head. head. No, I would never have had to do this for Mufasa. Based on the shape and characteristics, it could definitely be a lion skull. But to be fair, it could also belong to any number of other beasts. Number 7. It's a political allegory. Prepare for sensational news. A shiny new era is tiptoeing nearer. And where do we feature? Just listen to teacher. There are many ways you can interpret the story told in The Lion King, and several viewers have noticed political undercurrents in the narrative, albeit different ones. No wonder we're dangling at the bottom of the food chain. Man, I hate dangling. Yeah. You know, if it weren't for those lions, we'd be running the joint. Some have suggested that the lions of Pride Rock represent the British imperialists who colonized Africa, and that the rest of the animals are the Africans themselves. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Another keen observer compared Simba's story to the rise of the Soviet Union, with Mufasa acting as the Tsar, and the hyenas representing the proletariat, with Scar as the revolutionary leader, aka Lenin. There's definitely some logic behind this one. And you'll never go hungry again! Number 6. The Drought is Simba's Fault 
Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. When Simba leaves the kingdom after his father's death, Pride Rock and the surrounding area soon experience an extreme drought that lasts for years, devastating the population and making it impossible for the lions to find food. Some have speculated that Mufasa caused the drought, because the spirit cloud version of him seems to have the ability to control the weather. Simba, you have forgotten me. No, how could I? You have forgotten who you are and so forgotten me. Others say that because the kingdom was without its rightful leader, Simba, the weather represented the fact that the entire ecosystem was out of sync. So, while Simba may not have caused any harm on purpose, his return was the only thing that would bring the rains. Number 5. Scar is Nala's father. The family tree of the lions at Pride Rock can get a little complicated, but let's delve into it. Hmm, what do you think, Sarabi? Well… We know that Nala's mother is a lioness named Serafina, but throughout the film we are never told who her father is. Since there are only two adult male lions at Pride Rock, it might be safe to assume one of them sired her. The first theory is that Scar is actually her dad evidenced by the fact that she has blue-green eyes, while his are bright green. I see. Simba and Mufasa's eyes are red, as are Simba's mom, Sarabi's. That would make Simba and Nala cousins, which is not exactly ideal. Number 4. Mufasa is Nala's father. Just look at you two, little seeds of romance blossoming in the savannah. Your parents will be thrilled. What with your being betrothed and all? What's worse than Simba and Nala being cousins? Being siblings. Yeah. Ew. If Scar isn't Nala's father, then odds are Mufasa is. Of course, there is a possibility that Serafina mated with a lion outside of the pride, but it's pretty unlikely considering that's not how things usually go in Prides of Lions. Typically, male lions leave the pack to start their own families elsewhere when they're a certain age, to avoid inbreeding. So, each pride typically only has one alpha male. This means that while Simba and Nala don't have the same mother, it's very possible they have the same father, making them half-siblings. No, 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 it doesn't matter. Hakuna Matata. What? Hakuna Matata. Number 3. Mufasa and Scar aren't brothers at all. Why, if it isn't my big brother descending from on high to mingle with the commoners? While Simba refers to Scar as his uncle, we're left to assume he's Mufasa's younger brother, which is why he doesn't have the throne. Well, I was first in line until the little hairball was born. That hairball is my son and your future king. Oh, I shall practice my curtsy. But looking at them side by side, it's easy to question whether they're actually related because they look so remarkably different. Two of the creators behind The Lion King actually stated that it's very possible that Mufasa and Scar aren't actually blood related a fact that would be backed up by how lion hierarchies actually work. Well, as far as brains go, I got the lion's share, but when it comes to brute strength… I'm afraid I'm at the shallow end of the gene pool. Producer Don Hahn reportedly said it could be true, so this theory verges into real canon. Number 2. Zazu was a traitor. What's going on? A pouncing lesson. Oh, very good. Pouncing. Pouncing? Oh no, sire, you can't be serious. Oh, this is so humiliating. Try not to make a sound. What are you telling him, Mufasa? The Lion King was clearly inspired by many works that came before it, but perhaps most notable is the similarity to Shakespeare's Hamlet. Well, in that case, you're fired. Mm -hmm. It's easy to compare characters and plot lines between the two stories, and Zazu was almost a mirror image of Polonius. Thing is, though, Polonius wasn't exactly on the side he was supposed to be on, and we could possibly say the same for Zazu. The hornbill is literally and figuratively walked all over by the other animals in the kingdom, and isn't treated with respect by Mufasa or Simba. Some have speculated that he was actually working with Scar to drive Simba away, knowing that he wouldn't make a good king. If this is where the monarchy is headed, count me out! Out of service, out of Africa! Okay, wow. Now I can't be unconvinced that Zazu was a double agent. 
All right, while I collect the broken pieces of my childhood, get your theory hats on for these honorable mentions. Dad, don't we eat the antelope? Yes, Simba, but let me explain. Kid, what's eating you? Nothing. He's at the top of the food chain. <laughs> the food chain! <laughs> what am I going to do with him? He'd make a very handsome throw rug. Sazu. Yeah, but this stuff doesn't seem to be getting me anywhere. You can't give up now. I'm counting on you. Run away, Scar. And never return. Yes. Of course. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem-free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. Number 1. Mufasa was the villain It's easy to watch The Lion King and blindly accept the narrative that Mufasa is right and Scar is wrong about how to run the kingdom. Is that a challenge? We get it. Scar is power-hungry and kind of evil, but he and his people are also just straight-up hungry. Yeah, we could have whatever's lying around. <laughs> wait, 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 I got one, I got one. Make mine a cub sandwich. What you think? <laughs> If you take a second to think about it, Mufasa is just enforcing a class system among the animals that's not unlike the deeply problematic ones that exist in the real world. The lions are like the wealthy elite, and the hyenas are the powerless lower classes, scrambling to get basic resources like food and water. Anyone with progressive views would watch this movie today and be forced to take another look at who the true villain is here. Long live the king. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.